Hello, my name is Alex Cunliffe, and today I'm going to talk to you about model compression for deep learning models. And for more detail, this is all based off of a blog post that I've written, so you can view that here on the ProLego blog. Um, and also, if you're interested in looking at the code or borrowing some for yourself, we also have a GitHub repo that's available. So I'm going to start with a motivating example. <clears throat> and so maybe I have a, kind of a simple machine learning problem. I would like to take some tweets from Twitter and I'd like to predict the sentiment on him. So maybe uh, a tweet is, has a positive, a negative, or a neutral sentiment. And this is a fairly standard machine learning task. And because of that, I can take advantage of publicly available models. For instance, there's this model here, which has been trained to do sentiment analysis on tweets. I can download that model, write an inference script, and then run inference to predict the sentiment of those tweets. So we'll do that now. So this is running sentiment analysis on 200 tweets. And so first it's got to load the data, prepare it, load the model, and then we get into running inference. All right, so the 200 tweets, um, inference is running on those right now. This is running on CPUs, on just on my local machine. And um, you can see it's taking some time. You might say, well, why don't you just use GPUs? And it's true, that would speed up inference time by about an order of magnitude. However, GPU instances are um, fairly expensive to rent or buy. And so you'll be in situations sometimes where for monetary reasons, CPU inference just makes more sense. All right, so inference is done. And you can see it took about 30 seconds to do inference on these 200 samples. And what I'm going to talk about today in this video is going to allow you to get that inference time down from that to here. So now I have a compressed version of my model and I'm running inference on those same 200 tweets. You can see it loaded data, loaded the model just like before, and now inference is running and it's done. So in a little less than five seconds, we've done inference on those same 200 tweets. And so how did I do that? Well, there we go. So I did that using um, model compression techniques. And when we're doing model compression, that refers to the process of modifying the model in some way with one or more of these goals in mind. Um, we might want to reduce disk space, hard disk usage, improve uh, memory usage, and also decrease latency of the model. I'm going to talk about four different ways to compress a model to achieve these goals, serialization, quantization, pruning, and model architecture changes. And I'm actually going to split this into two part series. So for the first part, I'll talk about serialization and quantization. And then for the next video in the series, I'll go through pruning and model architecture changes. So be sure to check that one out. So So starting with serialization, serialization refers to the process of encoding, of encoding a model in a format that will allow you to store that model down to disk and then reload and deserialize it in some way when needed. So um, if you're familiar with like pickling a scikit-learn model, that's an example of model serialization. Um, you can use something like TorchScript to serialize a PyTorch model. There's also a popular serialization framework called Onyx or Open Neural Network Exchange. And Onyx serialization is kind of nice because it also allows you to be kind of platform independent. So you can train a model using one framework, um, serialize it to Onyx, and then using Onyx runtime, you can do inference using a different type of framework. <clears throat> and um, one more thing to mention is I'm going to be using this kind of nice memory profiler here to run my examples. So this is a memory profiler that is going to track the RAM usage of my system over time. You can pip install this and um, it's kind of nice. Simply you add this decorator around whatever function you want to profile and then it's going to sample uh, memory usage over time and track like when each of those functions are being run. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to run um, inference using a Roberta based transformer model and then an Onyx serialized version of that model for comparison. And I'm gonna run memory profiling for both of those and then use um, some of the plotting tools that are available through the profiler as well. So what we're looking up here is um, the 
time is on the x-axis and on the y-axis is memory usage. So we ran inference using the base model and then the Onyx serialized version of the model. And you can see the base model for the number of samples we had took about 25 seconds to run. And the um, vast majority of that time was in the prediction step where it's running inference using the model. Compare that with Onyx serialization here, we've reduced inference time drastically. Um, prediction only takes about six to seven seconds total and the total inference time was around 13 seconds. And one more thing to note about this, I'm not showing it here, but hard disk usage is pretty similar between these two models. Um, it's, both of them are around a half a gig. Um, same with RAM consumption. We haven't really made a dent in that. <clears throat> so then the next thing we're going to look at is going to attempt to address those other two factors as well. Quantization is the process of changing the precision of floating point numbers in a model in order to reduce model size. There are three different types of quantization um, that are mainly talked about, dynamic, static, and quantization over training. And these first two, dynamic and static quantization, are quantization approaches that are done after the fact. You have a trained model, and now you're going to uh, quantize floating point numbers um, at, like on, a, on a trained model. <clears throat> For quantization over training, quantization is happening as part of the training process itself, which can, which can lead to uh, some increases in model accuracy, things like that. So the difference between um, dynamic and static quantization, during dynamic quantization, both the model weights, or the model weights are stored using 8-bit precision, so that the, they're quantized, but the activations are stored using full precision and then quantized at the time of compute. For static quantization, both the activations and the weights are quantized um, during storage. So <clears throat> static quantization, you're gonna get a little bit of a speed up compared with dynamic quantization, um, but dynamic quantization, especially for transformers is what's generally recommended. For one, it's gonna be um, more accurate. It's gonna lead to less degradation in your model performance. And then also for a big model like a transformer, um, due to this large model size, you're really gonna get the biggest gains from focusing on quantizing the large number of weights that are in the model. And so I'm gonna take my, uh, my Onyx model that I had before and use Onyx quantization to quantize this model, run memory profiling, and graphs would get a bit cumbersome, so we're going to switch to a table view of this. You can compare for the baseline model, the Onyx serialization of the model, and then doing serialization and quantization, the RAM consumption, hard disk space, model loading time, and inference time. So like we saw before, um, from the baseline to the Onyx serialized model, we've cut down inference time substantially, and then we've further been able to cut down inference time um, almost in half or more than in half by also applying quantization. In addition to that, peak RAM consumption, hard disk space, both of those are reduced using the serialized and quantized model. One other thing to note is that quantization will change in some cases, the predictions that are coming out of this model. This is expected. Um, if you're changing the precision of the weights in your model, then the output scores are going to be slightly different. And it's particularly if those scores are kind of close to decision thresholds um, or have kind of ties um, that can lead to predictions being different than in the unquantized model. I'm showing this here. I have um, my sentiment prediction model that I had shown you before. This is the baseline model here. You see it's a 0.7 accuracy. And then this is also the confusion matrix here. And then um, using Onyx, quant Onyx quantization, you can see that the accuracy has changed um, pretty slightly. And then also the confusion matrix shows that some of the predictions that would have fit into one bin have shifted to a different category. Um, so this is something that just to be aware of, I think as a data scientist, um, you'll already have tools that you've developed in order to measure the performance of models. Um, and it's important after doing quantization to measure precision, recall, whatever, whatever other performance metrics you're using to evaluate if any potential degradations in those performance metrics are worth the gains that you're getting in inference time, in um, disusage, 
et cetera. So I'm gonna pause here. And in this video, I've shown how just through using serialization and quantization, you can really have substantial performance boosts to your model. This plot is showing how we've been able to reduce inference time by almost an order of magnitude, as well as reduce hard disk space and um, RAM consumption. And really for many middle of the road applications, this, is, uh, this might be all you really need to achieve. If you're interested in figuring out how to eke out even slightly improved uh, latency, um, slightly improved performance, check out the next video. In that one, I will be talking about pruning and model architecture changes. Thank you.